What's going on guys? Um, this is going to be the first episode of what I'm going to call the OSCP Struggle Bus Diaries. I'm going to try to do these once a week-ish, something like that. Um, if I find something like that I particularly want to talk about or vent about or something like that, I'll, I'll do them more often. Um, but it's just going to be a series documenting my time through the OSCP, um, talking about different struggles, things that I feel like I should have studied more before I started, um, or things that uh, weren't necessarily studying as much. I'm going to try to make it as helpful as possible, but more or less it's going to be a way for me to vent my frustrations because there, it's been one week and I've already had plenty. Um, so to kind of introduce the layout of it, since it's going to be once a week, it's going to be kind of like high level and I can't really talk about things super specific. Um, because that's, that's part of the kind of contractual agreements that you've got whenever you start the OSCP is that you don't talk about very like specific how to do X or Y things. Um, but I will be talking about things at a high level to kind of um, help people out who are thinking about starting it or who have already started it and have, ha have hit a wall or if you're like me, you've tried it once and failed it or just never really got anywhere so you, you just kind of quit. So the goal for this series, at least, is to help out with that. Um, I'm also going to kind of hijack this episode, at least, to introduce content going forward. I've been kind of weird with content, um, just, I guess, in general. I've thought about picking up YouTube as a way to kind of um, get a lot of educational stuff out there because I've already been doing a little bit of that on Twitch, and I'm going to try to make Twitch more educational rather than gaming-related. Um, so I, I'm going to be putting out more educational content, um, as you see with the little thing that's bouncing around above my head, I've got a Twitter and a, pro, uh, and a Patreon page. If you're finding me through Twitter, then you already know about that, but I did create a Patreon page just to kind of gauge, um, I, I've got a couple of budgetary concerns about this, um, because a lot of this is going to take a lot of time, it's going to take a lot of effort, and sometimes I'm going to have to buy proprietary software or you know even dedicated hardware for a lot of the stuff that I really want to do. And um, I don't really want to take that out of my own budget. Um, this isn't really an easy um, turnaround thing for YouTube. It's not like you've got millions of people who are coming to look for some guy ranting about the OSCP. But... Um, I created the Patreon page in hopes that maybe I can gauge um, public interest about it and help cover a little bit of the overhead. Um, if you've got any particular asks or anything like that, you can hit me up on Twitter. Ask me about it. I've got open DMs and all of that fun stuff. But as for this particular series, it's going to be all about the OSCP. Um, the OSCP um, is a 30, 60, or 90 day lab course with a 24 hour exam at the end. The lab course is formally titled the Penetration Testing with Kali Linux course. Um, it is a very incredibly comprehensive and hands on course that basically it, it goes like this you start the labs day one, they give you VPN access. Um, and a download link for a custom version of Kali, Kali Linux, um, which is the operating system used primarily for penetration testing. Um, you don't even actually have to use the custom version of Kali. You can use your own you know, special version of Kali or just the default version of Kali, which is what I'm doing. Um, they give you VPN access and then they send you the lab materials. The lab materials are literally a PDF file with all of the fun stuff in it and a bunch of videos documenting all of the exact same stuff. There's no other structure to it. Um, they give you access to the lab and all of that material for you to read over how to do this, how to do that, and it is completely up to you how you approach it. I've heard from people who never even looked at the videos. I've heard from people who looked at the videos but not in the book. I've heard from people who read both and still sucked at the exam. Like, it, it, it's brutal. So. With that being said, it's completely self-paced. Once you get your 90-day lab period, you, I mean, you, that that's it. You basically have to learn as much as possible by hacking as many of the boxes as possible. You've got everything from Linux boxes to Windows boxes to everywhere in between. And you're given 30, 60, or 90 days, however much you bought, 
um, that amount of time to learn as much as possible through the labs. After that is over, you schedule a class time or a uh, exam time. When you start the exam, you're given access to a different lab, which is set up with a different number of boxes, all configured differently, all different operating systems running different service and services. And you're given 24 hours to hack into as many of those as possible and then write a report about it. You're scored based on how many boxes you pop and how well written your report is. Um, so obviously there are some pretty easy parallels between the lab and the exam. If you're good at the lab, you're probably going to be better at the exam. Um, so the 90 days that I bought, I, I ended up going with 90 because that's kind of recommended since you really want to learn as much as humanly possible throughout the whole process. Um, throughout that 90 days, you have to learn as much as possible about reverse shells, about binary exploitation, about web, you know, uh, web app exploitation, everything, everything in the book. And they basically just hope that you learn as much as possible until the exam. And then once the exam goes, you have 24 hours to do it all again on a completely new lab that you haven't seen before. So what have I done so far? On paper, absolutely nothing. I'm a weekend. Um, I've watched a lot of the I've watched a lot of the videos, probably I think I think I'm at one third of the videos. I've read a little bit of the book, um, though the book, honestly, if, if this may serve as my first piece of advice, the book is pretty much just repeating what the video says and vice versa. So I think that that's more there. It, it, there's a little bit more information in the book. Um, I wouldn't say skip over reading the book, but I would say that it, there's a lot of repeated information. So if you're a better, if you're better at listening or if you're a better audio learner or visual learner, you're probably going to benefit more from the videos versus reading the book, you know, and if you're better, at, you know, learning by reading than vice versa. Um, so I wouldn't say that it's necessary to just read, read and watch like side by side, because that's what I, that's not what I've been doing and I've been learning it fine. Um, but the second piece of advice that I would give is find a good note taking app. I'm using Cherry Tree, which is already on Kali Linux. There's also OneNote, which has been recommended to me and just default WordPad. But I really like Cherry Tree. It's, you know, pretty robust and I like the way that it's laid out in kind of nodes and sub nodes um, in order to keep notes very um, in a very organized way. I know a lot of penetration testers also use OneNote and uh, Cherry Tree to kind of keep those uh, those structured notes. Um, so take a lot of notes, note down um, scripts that you're likely to use multiple times, um, keep notes of different services running on different boxes once you actually start to get to the enumeration phase. I've actually done a good bit of enumeration already. Um, I've found the DNS servers and listed out all of the different domains. Um, and all of that fun stuff already. That's mainly because I was dumb and didn't buy my class materials at the same time as I started the actual lab. So I had about a three day period waiting on my course materials where I was just like, I already know how to use InMap. I'll get a couple of these things figured out, start taking notes and enumerating services and all of that fun stuff. Um, but I'm starting to kind of reel back on that and realizing that a lot of the enumeration that I did, I could have done better or I could have done, you know, taken notes better, you know, just different, ser I could have used different services and different tools in order to enumerate in a more efficient way and take better notes and learn more things from the services that I use. Um, and I learned that after I started using the course materials. Um, so definitely buy the course materials as soon as you start the course. Um, you you want to start by watching the videos and you know, don't just try to jump right into it, even though it seems really tempting. You kind of think, oh, I've got 90 days. I really ought to hop on this. Um, but you really kind of need, it, it's definitely a marathon and not a sprint. Um, there are going to be portions where you do sprint because you're going to panic. But, you know, at least just kind of start slow and realize that, the enumeration and the, um, you know, just the, in general recon phase is much more important than the rest of it. If you do well in that first phase, you're gonna do fine once you get to actual exploitation. Um, so with that being said, that's probably gonna wrap up the first Struggle Bus Diary. 
Um, I'm hoping to have these out once per week. I'm going to figure out an exact schedule for it, but you know, if you've been watching my content before, you know that I'm not great at scheduling anyways. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hopefully going to be at least a once a week thing where I just kind of talk similar to this, give advice and talk about different struggles that I've had. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for showing up. Um, hit me up on Twitter with any questions, um, leave comments on the video, whatever you want to do. Um, and you guys take it easy.